you're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your hosts, Steph and Tara, every Wednesday morning as they dive into a new witchy topic. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 22, Astrology for Witches, part one. Ooh. <laughs> I wanted to call it part one because there is just so much information to share about astrology. And I think that could be an entire like podcast series by itself. There probably is one. There's probably a podcast dedicated just to astrology. Um, so it would be in- absolutely impossible to cover everything that we would need to in just one episode. So we are going to call this, you know, astrology 101 <laughs> um, and how that and talk a little bit about how that can affect your witchcraft practice. And if you can't tell, Steph's really, really into this topic. So expect probably like five episodes on it. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try to limit it because I'm really trying for um, these episodes to just be, you know, witchcraft intro and kind of just go over like all the basics about a lot of different things. And we have still have so many topics that we haven't touched on yet. So I'm um, going to try to keep this to a minimum and then pick up astrology again later in the year. But we just wanted to give you some background because we do often talk about like our sun signs um, and how that sort of affects our personality and our practice. So we thought we should explain what that means if you are not familiar. Yep. So the very first thing um, that we wanted to sort of talk about in relation to the to astrology is all about the zodiac and birth charts. Um, so birth charts, so you can make a free chart um, at astrostyle.com slash free dash chart, astrostyle.com. And all you need to do is put in your date of birth the location which you were born and if you know it the time in which you were born um as close or as close to the time as possible um because that will give you the most accurate reading of your own birth chart and the position of the stars and the planets um at the exact moment that you were born which shapes a lot of your personality and how things unfold in your life And I was just talking to Steph about this. So I was using the free charting thing right before we started recording. And I, so depending on when your parents chose for the exact time of your birth, it could have been the beginning of when you were being born or the end, which can have some um, minute variation. So choose one or the other. But if you don't know like the exact time, second, everything, then just do something close to the planets don't move that quickly. They'll still be very similar. <laughs> yes, they will. They will still be very similar. Um, and the, for the time, you know, if you're within the hour, um, you should get the same readings on your birth chart. Yeah. So, and it's only important if you were like me and born at midnight and my parents chose the 14th rather than the 13th, because my mom didn't want me to have to celebrate my birthday on Friday the 13th ever. So so let's, uh, before we get into like, the, the actual birth chart, um, let's go over some of the terms that you need to know. First up is the Zodiac. So if you don't know, um, the Zodiac is made up of 12 constellations. And these constellations are, in order from January to December, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius, which is generally not that that's from January to December. So that's, you know, how I remember them in order. Um, But generally Aries is considered the first sign of the Zodiac, if if that matters to you. (laughs) (laughs) So a sun sign refers to the position of the sun at the time of your birth. So when you are, you know, reading like a horoscope in uh, the newspaper or something, generally people look to their sun sign. When somebody says, you know, like Tara and I say, I'm a Scorpio, I'm a Libra, um, we are talking about our sun signs. Uh, So 
in astrology, the sun is considered the most powerful celestial body. So that's why it's the first one. And that kind of makes sense because it's big and important and it does affect a lot of things. (laughs) Um, So the sun sign has the most influence um, on who you are as a person. And we'll shed sort of the light on the major themes of your life. So every 30 or so days, the sun moves through each constellation in the Zodiac. Um, And it takes about a year for the sun to travel through all the constellations um, or these astrological signs. So I don't think I need to point this out for anybody. I think we all know this. But when I say the sun moves, the sun doesn't actually move. Okay, we move. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if if Tara picked up on that, but I sent her the outline of what we're going to talk about. And I put move in quotes because the sun does does not move, guys. I hope we all know that. But um, when the earth moves, it makes it look like the sun is passing through each of these constellations. Okay. So so we know. Just like we don't think the earth is really moving. It actually is. We're just moving in relation to it. So we think (laughs) it's moving still. Same concept. Uh, So the... um, second most important part that you're going to get out of your birth chart is to figure out what your moon sign is. And this refers to the position that the moon was in at the moment of your birth. Um, so if you don't relate to your sun sign and and a lot of people don't, um, you might get a better reading by knowing what your moon sign is because the sun sign provides information on your conscious conscious mind, whereas the moon sign will give you a deeper understanding of your subconscious subconscious. Gosh, that word is hard for me today. (laughs) It happens. Um, So some people think of the moon sign as your true self and who you are deep down. Um, So it's basically instinct versus intellect. Yes. That's how I think of it. (laughs) And the third most important part um, is called the ascendant or rising sign. They mean the same thing. And that was the sign that was rising up from the Eastern horizon at the time of your birth. Uh, and this is the sign that you almost look like on the outside. So if your friends don't think that you are typical for your sun sign, they probably see you as your rising sign. Yes. Um, so those are the three that you should look at to try to figure out, you know, if you don't, automatically read the description of the, your sun sign and think that that's you. You might want to look at these other two to get a more accurate reading. The rising sign also indicates um, when major life events will happen to you. Um, so you do need to know like the close to the exact time to figure out what this ascendant sign is. But if you really don't know, a pretty experienced astrologer can look at your life Um, and tell you what your ascendant sign is based on the timing of like personal milestones in your life, which I find really interesting because my, um, I am adopted. So we don't know the exact time that I was born. We know it was in the morning. It was probably around 730, but we're not sure the exact time. And according to that timing, my rising sign um, is Sagittarius. But if I didn't know that, then I would know that it's Sagittarius based on the timing of certain milestones, like the fact that um, I have had, I've gotten a major illness or um, had major surgery pretty much every December. Oh my God. For my every December. Life. Like <laughs> all the time. If it's December, you can practically count down stuff getting sick. Yep. Getting like a major illness. Like I had scarlet fever and whooping cough as a kid, like major illnesses. So those things always happen to me in December because my, Mm -hmm. those are, you know, major milestones for me, like big surgeries and things like that. And they always happen like Christmas. So it's Sagittarius. There you go. She's not even kidding. Like the first year I met her and we were really becoming friends, she's like, well, we can't plan anything for these two weeks because I'll be sick. And I was like, how would you possibly know that? And she ended up in the hospital. Yep. Like it was ridiculous. Like I she sure, knew. I sure <laughs> did. Yep. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so those are the, so those are the main three that will give you the most accurate um, overall picture um, of your personality and your life. Yep. So to um, associate the Zodiac a little more with the practice of witchcraft, you want to know Um, what the elements are. So these 12 signs are associated with specific elements, which if you follow astrology and you know your sun sign, you probably know which element you are. 
so the earth signs are Taurus, Capricorn, and Virgo, and they are considered creative, stable, and nurturing. Mm-hmm. The air signs, which is what Terra is, yep. are Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra, and they are <laughs> intellectual, decisive, and great at communicating. But the only thing is Libras can be very indecisive because they are constantly balancing their options. <laughs> so I am such a Libra, which you have heard us say on this podcast before. And the thing is like, it takes forever for me to make a decision, but once I've made it, there's no changing my mind. I have weighed up every option. There's no way you're making me change my mind. So decisive <laughs> in like, once I make up a, a decision, it's I'm sticking with it, but it literally takes a while every- right there. I was going to say, every time I visit Steph, she has to choose where we're going for dinner, unless I've been thinking about it for a week ahead of time. And then we're going where I want to go. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like that. She can think of it the day of and come up with a good decision. Nope. I need like a solid week to make a call on that. And that's, that's for true. dinner. <laughs> uh, the water signs, which is what I am, are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And they are emotional, intuitive, and idealistic. Mm-hmm. And last are the fire signs, which are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, and they are enthusiastic, ambitious, and energetic. So you probably already associate these certain characteristics um, with the elements. Um, you know, the earth signs are always considered very stable because when you think of the earth, you just think of, think of like nurturing stability. Um, and on the other side, when you think of um, like fire signs, you already think of the element as fire as being you know energetic and enthusiastic sort of the opposite of earth Mm -hmm. um so these also you know carry over from this astrology into your witchcraft practice so the way to um sort of work this in is to look at your sun sign and see you know if you want to incorporate elements, the elements into your practice, your sun sign, the element that's associated with it is probably going to be the one um, that you connect with most. And if you're, so I am um, a water sign. So if my rising and moon sign were also in water, that I would feel very strongly attached to the water element and be able to use that um, and work well with the energy of water in my magical practice. Um I am not though. Mine are actually air, water, and fire. So I'm like <laughs> all, all over the board. Um, but that's actually, you know, a good thing in my practice because I can balance all of those energies together. Yeah. Um, and as which is also helpful to know um, what these different elements are um, because when you are doing a spell, it helps to know you know, based on what kind of um, spell that you're actually doing. So if you are um, wanting to make a spell to, um, let's say, make a decision at work of, you know, whether you're going to take a promotion that's going to um, give you more money, but also take you away from your family or things like that, um, and you need that, like, decision-making energy, you might want to incorporate the air element into your spell that spell work that you're doing so um the last part of the birth chart so when you get it and you look at it and you figure out you know what those three signs are and how all those elements work for you um the next part is actually the planets so you will see the (laughs) so you will actually see the planets on this birth chart it's set up like a wheel and you'll see you know, the, the 12 Zodiac signs, but you also see where the planets are in this sort of wheel and, um, what there are, they are associated with different energies there as well. So, um, Mercury is associated with communication. Venus is love. Mars is motivation and conflict, which you probably, these are war, war. <laughs> yeah, these are probably familiar to you. Um, if you know about like Greek or Roman mythology, Mars is, you know, the god of war. So yeah. um, Uranus is change and technology. Neptune is hopes and dreams. Jupiter is luck and learning. Saturn is 
boundaries and any external factors that are outside your control. And Pluto is power because Pluto is a planet. Pluto is a planet and I will fight you if you say it's not. <laughs> I think you're going to like that one. But I, <laughs> I was like, it is important. Um, when you get your birth chart, it generally they do show Pluto on there. So just say it is important just because they downgrade it doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. <laughs> um, I have strong feelings about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so each of these planets is important to kind of know um, what they are associated with to use that in your spell work. So Jupiter, let's say, is about, about luck and learning. So like maybe you want to cast, you know, a spell about um, being lucky in money. You can look more into Jupiter. Jupiter is going to have its own um, crystal associations. It has its own deities associated with it, its own colors. Um, so if you would like to use the energy of Jupiter and tra track where Jupiter is in its cycle to make... Um, your spell more effective, that could be a great way to use the, the planets as well. It also can help knowing um, the different, where you are based on the different planets. Like personally for Mercury, um, I'm five degrees in Scorpio. So I love to investigate things. I'm fascinated by secrets and mysteries and unanswered questions. So a lot of times when I'm doing spell work, I like to not only know what the spell is for, but all the different parts going into it. I like to investigate like where this herb came from. And that's a lot of why I grow my own herbs a lot of times, because I want to know the whole history of what's going into my spell work. And that kind of develops from there. Yeah, so it's a great way um, to sort of get a better understanding of how your practice is going to work. Um, is to look at your birth chart and it's great when you get it because it gives you, it's sort of, that site will also give you a whole description of what everything means. Mm -hmm. You're not like left to try to, to figure it all out and look it all up. It will tell you about your um, personality and you might find that there's your, your birth chart is heavily concentrated in a section that is, you know, you're more emotional and artistic and things like that. So you might find, um, that your witchcraft practice, um, you have, you incorporate a lot of, you know, painting or drawing or working with your hands. Whereas like, I don't have that in my birth chart. So like, I have no artistic anywhere. So to incorporate <laughs> any of that into my practice is just like strange for me. It would be like working against my personality. So I, you know, I wouldn't really like try that. Even if somebody suggested and said, you know, I read some place, oh, this, you know, spell is, you know, really effective for me. If it's very artistic, I know that it's not going to be effective for me. And I can understand yeah. that before I try to attempt it. That's not um, to say you shouldn't attempt it, but just in my personal case, trying to get your hopes up that just because it worked for this one person who's super creative doesn't mean it's going to work really well for me. <laughs> exactly. So the last part of the birth chart that you're going to see set up on this wheel um are called the houses which there are also 12 of shocking <laughs> so each of those also gives you guidance on certain aspects of your personality and life experiences um so in order to sort of read the houses on the chart you want to locate your rising sign when you get the wheel um and that's your very first house. And then from there, you move clockwise to see where each sign falls in the rest of the houses. But again, if you go to that website that we mentioned, it does it for you. <laughs> so there's a whole diagram. I'm not even going to say that it's not pretty because it's very pretty, but it's all there. <laughs> yes. So it, has, it does all the work for you. So each of these 12 houses represents a part of you. Um, so the first house is associated with your outward behavior and your outward appearance. So it, this doesn't necessarily, I mean, your, your very first house um, is going to be your ascendant sign. So mine is the Sagittarius. So don't um, put your sun sign as your first house. That's not accurate. Mm -hmm. um, the second house is all about money and material wealth. The third house is about communication. 
The fourth house is home and environment. The fifth house is creativity, romance, and pleasure. The sixth house is health and work. The seventh house is partnerships, marriage, and or long-term enemies. I like that one. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> um, the eighth house is all about change, transformation, and sexual relationships. The ninth house is study, travel, beliefs, and spirituality. The tenth house is ambition, career goals, social status, and your reputation. The eleventh house is hopes, dreams, and friendships. And the twelfth and last house is self sabotage, self imposed limitations, secrets, and accidents, which is actually where my sun sign falls. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a Scorpio in the 12th house, all about those secrets. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, that's a, that is definitely me. Um, so just to see where those, um, that's like another aspect of this birth chart that you'll get. You'll see where each of these um, signs, these co- constellations fall within each of these houses. So once you get that birth chart printed out, it will tell you um, how you kind of work best in relation to that aspect. So how, if you're, you know, whatever sign is in your second house, that's how you're going to relate to money and material wealth and the best way for you to manage money or um, create more income or something like that. The best way for you to go about that, that's your birth chart will tell you that. And if you're confused by this really quick run through, that's completely understandable. There's a lot being covered this is just a very broad overview of the basics. This is almost like the definition page before you get into like actual study. <laughs> yes. And we just think it's helpful to sort of have the definitions because we talk about these things a lot. And we talk about our sun signs and the various elements and, you know, why certain ones do or don't work for us. So getting your own birth chart will help you sort of follow along. And it definitely helps to look at the birth chart. Um, So even if you are listening to this episode and you're like, what's happening? I would suggest listening and then going and getting your birth chart and then maybe listening to this episode again to kind of find where you fall on these different, what house you're in, what, you know, what ascending sign you are, because at least for me, the visual helps. I'm all about the visual (laughs) as we (laughs) talked about. Which I'm sure is somewhere in your birth chart. Explains I'm why. sure it is. <laughs> okay. Well, we packed a lot of information in. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram or email. Mm-hmm. And we will do our best to answer them. But definitely let us know on Instagram um, if you know what your sun, moon, and rising signs are. And if you identify with one or um, over any of the others. And don't be afraid of identifying with one over the others. Or if you're like me, your sun and moon are both the same. So like, <laughs> yes, that, that is definitely Sometimes. possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely impossible too. Um, and it's possible that you don't associate very much with the other ones. My sun sign is a Scorpio. My moon is Libra and my rising is Sagittarius. And I am a Scorpio through and through. There's very little that I identify with, with Libra or Sagittarius. So, yeah, whereas go. my sun and moon are both Libra and my rising is Cancer. And I do identify a lot with Libra. I make a lot of Libra jokes, but I can definitely see Cancer more than some of, uh, some Libra stuff is too lovey-dovey for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let us know what you think. Um, reach out to us on Instagram. And that is all we have for you this week on Astrology 101. (laughs) And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Follow us on Insta. Thanks for listening to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara. Love our content? Consider donating at anchor.fm slash witch dash Wednesdays to help keep our podcast up and running. Please leave us a voicemail on that same site if you have any questions or comments and follow us on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.